Hi, today I want to talk about upper lip ties and how they affect the cranial facial structure and why I believe that uh, they should be released uh, if they are present, uh, especially during tongue tie releases. My name is Dr. Daniel Lopez. I'm from Osteopathic Integrative Medicine and I have been uh, studying tongue ties and lip ties and buckle ties uh, and, and how they relate to airway for over six years now. And I myself have had uh, several releases and I've had family members who've, who've also had them and, and many patients. So this is something that, that I have been studying for a long time. I have presented lectures on how the, uh, the tongue is continuous with the rest of the body and how, how that ana anatomy is all inter interconnected. So uh, I want to tell you about an experience I had recently where I was able to palpate a patient who was having an upper lip tie release. And she actually had the upper lip tie release uh, before, the, before she had her tongue tie release uh, in, during this procedure. Uh, and so it was, I was able to palpate specifically what was happening during the uh, upper lip tie release. And one thing that really stood out to me was how uh, her, face, her face widened and also uh, it flattened out from being more pointed from the in the front so if this is her face kind of like following this structure here uh, wh what then happened was uh, it, there was more of a flattening out in the front and a widening in the uh, more uh, towards the back with the maxillary bones so uh, but i want to explain a little bit about why this happened and talk about some uh, some of the fascia related to this and then uh, so that we can go through an exercise and you can kind of understand what it is you may be feeling especially if you have an upper lip tie so the fascia that is likely going to be uh, associated with an upper or even lower lip tie is going to be more continuous with the investing uh, fascial layer that, that is the more superficial layer of fascia in the neck of axial fascia and that, that fascial layer connects to the hyoid bone and then comes up uh, through the head and is continuous and has many other names, but then eventually blends in with epicranial fascia that then is also connecting to the dural membranes that are coming out through the sutures and, uh, and, and blending in that way. Now the tongue, on the other hand, uh, is, I, I, is going to have fascial layers from from the base of the skull from underneath. So I'm going to show you on the skull model uh, here. Let's see, or somewhere in this area here uh, that we have a layer that's called the pharyngobasal or fascia. And then that comes down and, and, and then goes into the nasal cavity, flares into the nasal cavity and the oral cavity and, and, uh, and then uh, becomes continuous with the tongue. Now at the same time, there's also in the neck, there is the pretracheal fascial layer that is a deeper layer that is associated with visceral fascia and that attaches to the hyoid bone as well, but it's, and, and then it, it's gonna have a layer that is, is more, comes forward more, but is, is going to be deeper, in which case uh, up higher. And so there's likely going to be a blending of both that pharyngobasal or fascia and that pretracheal layer uh, at the tongue. Now, uh, so what I believe is happening is that then there is this superficial layer, but we got to look at it in three dimensions because that's also going, that's also going to become continuous and blending in with that pharyngobasal or fascia. Uh, and, and so what I want to point out here is I want, I want to just have you understand what, um, uh, the upper lip tie can do. So, uh, what we want to do is uh, pinch as close as you can uh, to the underneath your nose and then pull out. And you're just going to pull straight out and you're going to hold it. And, and you're trying to get as close to as you can. And for those of you who still have uh, upper lip ties present, you're going to feel that pull much stronger. Now, as you hold it, you're going to feel you're going to start to feel some tension uh, in the, let me get the skull here. You're going to feel it in this intermaxillary suture here. You see how these bones come together here. They also are doing so, um, 
in the roof of the mouth, like where these two bones are coming together, right there. So when you when you pull out, you're, you're going to feel uh, tension in that space between uh, where those bones are coming together, and you may feel some pull into the roof of your mouth. Now, if you take your pull that's coming straight out and you, and you angle it downward a little bit, you're, you're going to, after you hold it for a while, you're going to feel it more into the nasal cavity. And I'm a little bit unclear specifically on how a lip tie is necessarily affecting uh, the nasal cavity, but there is an effect uh, there likely that's going to be uh, also going to have a, uh, potentially an effect that's going to make it harder for the palate to drop down. Now, having talked about all this, like when there's an upper lip tie, what it does is that it like if we imagine again, this is where the maxillary bones are coming together and we're like this. And now we're looking at it here from below, like we showed in the skull. What a lip tie does is it pulls them forward and that makes them more pointed in the front. Now, when you were when what what also happens at that same time is it, it jams up this suture. So it makes it creates it makes less space there at that suture where those bones are coming together. Now, when we release the tongue tie, or I mean the upper lip tie, it takes that, ten that tension is then relieved and then the bones can draw, can shift back to a more appropriate position and then decompress a little bit. And that's also going to then allow the palate to drop down. And what is often Part of the reason we want to get a tongue tie in the first place is because uh, of its ability to draw the palate down when it's able to make contact with the palate. But if a tongue tie is there or an upper lip tie is there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tighten that and, and compress that suture and make it harder for it to drop down. And so that's the reason that I believe that we need to be paying more attention to uh, upper lip ties, uh, especially when there are tongue tie, when a tongue tie release is done and somebody has a high narrow palate. So uh, I hope you have uh, understood this video, but these are the realizations and insights that I was having uh, that I had when, when I was able to palpate this patient and, and really understand uh, a little bit more about what was happening in that context. And so if you find this video interesting and you want to learn more about how the the tongue and um, uh, just uh, tongue ties and upper lip ties and lip ties and buckle ties and everything is related to not to the face and the rest of the body, then go ahead and, and visit uh, continuoustongue.com. And otherwise, uh, feel free to read the article the that is also associated with this video. And I have posted the link below this video. So go ahead, check it out, and I will see you another time.